Hey everybody, it's Tim from Everyday Tactical Vids, and today we're taking a look at this blade, which is the Schrade SCHF-10 Extreme Survival Knife. You may be familiar with the SCHF-9, which is very similar to this, but just bigger, but I personally was very excited to get my hands on this blade to test it out, because I like my survival knives a little bit smaller and more compact, and just find them easier to use and maneuver in survival situations. So we'll be looking at this knife, taking a look at here in the studio and some of the specs on it, and then we'll take it out into the field and review it and test it there. From end to end, the SCHF-10 is 10.6 inches, the handle length is 5.3 inches, and the blade length is also 5.3 inches. The weight is 14.6 ounces, so it's not super lightweight, but if you have used something like the BK-2 from K-Bar or even the SCHF-9, those blades are heavier than this one. The actual blade is black 8CR13 MLV high carbon stainless steel. So the stainless steel will be nice as far as you don't have to worry about rust as much as you might with some other blades. Taking a look at the handle here, you can see all the way down on the end, we do have a hole for a lanyard. And then the actual handle is micarta. And you can take out those hex bolts on both sides and replace the handle with your own personalized micarta handle or you could replace it with paracord as well. The Schrade name is etched right there into the blade. You can see this is a drop point style of blade. Jimping up on the top here so you can choke up on the blade. Jimping here on the handle and then on the underside of the handle as well. Now when it comes to actually holding the knife you can see I've got this jimping on the bottom and on the top. So it's going to give me a nice positive control and you certainly can choke up and use the jimping on the top of the blade here if you do some whittling, maybe making feather sticks, something like that. This jimping, I would call it semi-aggressive. Sometimes you get jimping on knives and it really doesn't serve any purpose. It's not aggressive enough to actually give you some traction. And then other times you'll get jimping on a knife that's very aggressive and it kind of beats up your hand. And I would say this is kind of in between those two. So I do feel like I have nice, strong control of the knife and it's not gonna fall out of my hand when I'm really using the blade. We'll do some in-studio testing really quickly. First thing we'll do is just cut some paracord and you can see no problem whatsoever with this tip of the knife further down the blade again this is the factory edge I haven't sharpened it at all just how it comes straight to me from the factory and that works quite another well. important test is to see if the back of the knife here has a steep enough angle to give you a spark off a ferro rod and you can see this right here. So that works just fine. You do receive a sheath with the knife. They call this a ballistic belt sheath. On the front you can see we have a small pocket that's secured with hook and loop closure. In here you could put a ferro rod or maybe some food or some paracord, whatever else you want to take out into the woods. Inside here there is plastic lining the portion where the actual blade will go so it's not going to cut that material. You do have hook and loop closure up top to secure the handle and then this is stitched on the bottom so you're going to run your belt through here to secure the sheath to your belt. Just a quick look here at the blade when it's actually in the sheath and I wanted you to see that it does stick out probably about half an inch above the actual top of the sheath. We're continuing our review out in the field now of the SCHF-10 and actually it's perfect New Hampshire weather October 30th 2013 and we're getting our first snowfall of the season so Let's see how this knife holds up for some actual use like batoning and whittling and doing some other things as well. We'll start off now with some batoning. As you can see here, no problem, but toning is easy work for the SCHF-10. 
Next up, we'll do a little fine work, see if we can get some shavings if we were going to start a fire. So here's your final result. And this is one of the reasons I like a little bit smaller of a survival knife, just to make it, I find, a little bit easier to do this finer work. As a general rule, I don't chop with my survival knife, but just to show you that it could actually do that, I'm gonna do a little work on this dead branch over here. And here are the results for the chopping. As you can see, it did cut in quite significantly into this branch. All right, we're back here in the studio with some final thoughts on the Schrade SCHF-10. First thing I'll comment on is the handle. I just like the look of it. At a base on, I just think it's a very cool looking knife. Micarta is kind of a standard thing for a lot of full tang knives or survival knives. I like the ergonomics of the handle as well. Oftentimes for me, this first choil is a little bit funky on different knives because uh, some of them I can't fit, you know, two full fingers in. It's like a finger and a half, and my, my hand is kind of bending over awkwardly. With this one, I find it just where my hand lands and how it actually sits in my, uh, the knife sits in my hand. It's really comfortable for me, and I do like the jimping here. It just fits just right for my hand. Again, uh, I'm 6'2", so that, you know, I may have a little bit larger hand, but for me, this is just right. Um, I do prefer, as I mentioned before, a slightly smaller knife, and this actually fits into that category. It's not as small as some other bushcrafting knives where the blade's probably about, you know, here or so. So it is 5.3 inches of blade that is, for some people, a little bit short. For me, it's just about right. I do also like the uh, kind of the sweep of the blade as well. I have beat up the blade a little bit. Let's see if you can pick that up on the camera. Yeah, you can see up there toward the tip here. I really did, you know, smash it quite a bit when I was out testing it. So I'm going to have to sharpen that up, but it still does seem to hold an edge quite well and it's not uh, it's certainly not dull to the point when I can't use it a lot. Overall for around $40 or so quite impressed with this knife. Um, if you spend you know the 80 to 90 to 100 dollars you're going to be getting some different steels and some other options but for $40 and that price range this I think is a very very good option if you want to get a full tang very sturdy survival knife. Now as always we'll get back to you with updates as we test this knife and use it quite a bit and let you know how it's holding up. So thanks for checking out the video. As always, please uh, subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check us out on Tumblr.